We need to talk about the Kansas City Chiefs parade shooting yesterday and everything we've learned since. Because it happened at around 2 in the afternoon near Union Station in Kansas City, Missouri, where the Chiefs players had just finished addressing their fans and around a million people at a rally celebrating their Super Bowl victory. Just minutes later, you had gunfire ringing through what was a festive atmosphere, turning the parade into a stampede, with thousands of people running for their lives as multiple shooters sprayed bullets through the air. And I'll just let the survivors who were there describe what it was like. It all started off as a celebration, you know, it was fun. Everybody was in good spirits. Everybody was happy to be, you know, celebrating that two-peat by the Chiefs. When all of a sudden people started crushing forward, everybody started running. There was screaming. There was a woman crying, saying something about somebody had been shot. Well, we thought they were fire firecrackers at first. There was just kind of blood everywhere. And you could definitely hear the pop, pop, pop. Thank God there was somebody that helped me get to safety with my vision. I am legally blind, but a young man helped me. I see the SWAT teams jumping over the fence. I mean, this is yeah. our America these days. And by the end of it all, we have reports that at least one person person was killed and 22 injured, with around half of those wounded reportedly being children as young as 8 and no older than 16. You also had the city's fire chief saying that of the wounded, 7 had life-threatening injuries and 8 more had immediately life-threatening injuries. And this is according to the mayor, all chief's players, coaches, and staff have been accounted for. Now, as far as the person who died, she's been identified as 43-year-old Lisa Lopez Galvan. She was a mother of two, a radio DJ, and the host of Taste of Tejano, with a station putting out a statement saying this senseless act has taken a beautiful person from her family in this KC community. And a legislator who knew her her saying she was a member of a very large family of civic leaders actively involved in the city's Latino community, and adding she was the light at every party. She was oftentimes the voluntary DJ when everyone needed one for a community event. Also, with this horrific situation, you have another person who's been widely praised as a hero, and that being 46-year-old Paul Contreras. Right, he was just a father who was walking back to his car with his three daughters when the shooting started. And with that, him saying that he saw one of the alleged shooters running and heard someone screaming to stop him, and so he just leapt into action, telling CNN. I just, you don't think about it, it's just a reaction. He got close to me, I got the right angle on him. When I hit him from behind, I either jarred the gun out of his hand or out of his sleeve. With then a second man jumping in to help and Paul holding down the shooter's upper body and the other guy restraining his legs. And he's just fighting to get up, but we're, we're fighting to keep him down. And then a third bystander rushing over to pin the shooter, followed by then a swarm of police who finally detained the man. And actually now as of today, police have reportedly taken three people into custody, and two of them identified as juveniles. But other than that, with what the police are officially putting out there, we have very little information on who these alleged shooters are. Though, we do know that Paul Contreras' daughter told News Nation the one her father tackled was an African-American male. Now with all this, so far, the police chief has said that there is no indication of nexus to terrorism or homegrown violent extremism. And they're adding that the shooting appears to have been a, quote, dispute between several people that ended in gunfire, that also appearing to be backed up by one survivor who was shot in the ankle, telling CBS that he overheard an altercation prior to the shooting in which a girl told someone else, don't do it, not here, this is stupid. And then, according to him, his wife and daughter saw someone draw a gun. So apparently, these three suspects were not targeting the parade itself. Now, that said, as far as any other suspects, reportedly police initially questioned 10 people. So the status of the other seven who aren't in custody is unclear. And as of recording, I understand this is still a developing situation. No charges have been announced yet. Now, all that said, while we're waiting to get more information, Online, you may have seen that there's another big question floating around, with people now in the wake of this saying, why didn't the more than 800 cops policing the parade stop this sooner? Or saying, why did three consecutive civilians have to risk their lives tackling a gunman before law enforcement caught up? But, you know, as we wait to hear more, of course, people have been sharing their responses, and that includes both everyday people and even the President of the United States, with President Biden posting, how many more families need to be torn apart? It's time for Congress to finally act to ban assault weapons, limit high-capacity magazines, strengthen background checks, and keep guns out of the hands of those who have no business owning them. But with all that said, as we wait to see how this plays out, and of course, I'd love to know your thoughts here, I do want to end today by focusing on those brave BAMFs who, without a weapon, risk their lives and act it. Because people really never know how they're going to respond to a situation like that until they're in it. When the shit hit the fan that none of these people should have had to be a part of, they acted and possibly saved numerous lives.